Hey guys, in this video we're going to do a quick little DIY and show you how you can take a fairly inexpensive little component, these are less than 20 bucks, and combine it with a relatively inexpensive lithium iron phosphate battery like this 100 amp hour battery from Power Queen and turn this into a way to expand the battery capacity of your power station. Let's find out how it works. All right, so let's say you've got a power station like this Jackery 1000 here that does not really have a battery expansion option, or maybe you've got something like this EcoFlow Delta II that does have a battery expansion option, but it costs about $800. So what if I told you that we could fairly easily come up with a solution that does basically the same thing in terms of expanding the battery capacity and recharging with something like this for about a third of the price? All right, so here's what you're gonna need. So first of all, you need a 12 volt battery. Now you could do this with a lead acid battery. You could do this if you happen to have a lithium iron phosphate battery, like this Power Queen battery here. And then you're also going to need something like this. This is a 12 volt to 24 volt step up converter. And this is an inexpensive one, but it's fairly high rated on, on Amazon. And I'll leave a link to this in the description below. But it arrives with four leads on it, two leads for the input, two leads for the output. Uh, and then you have to actually connect the type of connectors that you need. So this is something that you have to be aware of. You do need to be a little bit comfortable with uh, knowing how to crimp connectors like these little ring terminals here that I use to attach to the battery uh, or crimp the output connector to something that works for your particular power station. Now in this particular case, I chose to use an XT60 connector, but I could have done a variety of ones. Uh, the XT60 connector lets me connect to any of the EcoFlow products, most of the Blue Eddy products, and then I also have adapters, uh, and those are readily available, that go from XT60 to just about anything. So uh, those are easy to find on Amazon, and you can you know, obviously make whatever kind of cable that you want, uh, but you kind of have to have at least a little bit of DIY confidence to understand how to splice cables and make this work safely. Now this particular step up converter outputs 24 volts. So it takes 12 volts in, nominal, and it outputs 24 volts, and it says up to three amps max, which would be about, what is that, 72 watts? But actually I've been able to get consistently more than 72 watts, actually up to about 150 watts out of this thing. So how do you know if something like this is gonna be compatible with your particular power station? Well, every power station publishes a minimum and maximum range on the DC input. So for example, the EcoFlow Delta II has a 11 volts to 60 volts range. Well, this outputs 24 volts. So that falls within that range, and so it is safe to use with that particular power station. But just to be sure, I did test this with nine other power stations, and let's take a look at those and see how they worked. So first, I tested with the Delta II from EcoFlow, which, as I said, has an 11 to 60 volt uh, range on the input, and I was able to get 185 watts out of this uh, step-up converter for charging, which is really good. The EcoFlow River 2 has an input range of 11 to 30 volts, and I was able to get 110 watts out of that. Now, I also tested with the Bluetti EB3A, which has a range of 12 to 28 volts. And interestingly, I was able to get 110 watts into this, but I will say the, the EB3A was making a little bit of a strange noise that I don't think it normally makes when it's being charged. So I'd be a little hesitant maybe to use it with the EB3A. On the other hand, the EB55 also has an input range of 12 to 28 volts, and I was able to get about 114 watts into the EB55. Now the Vito Man Jump Series, I tested this on the J1000, which I was able to get 119 watts in there, and also the Jump 600, which I was able to get 61 watts, because both of those have an input range of 12 to 30 volts. So well within the range to accommodate this 24 volt step up. I tested this with the Bouge RV Flash 300, and I was able to get 100 watts in on that one. And this should also work with pretty much all of the Jackeries, at least the E3000, the Explorer 500, and the Explorer 1000. 
Uh, also the Explorer 1000 Pro, which has a range of 17 and a half to 60 volts. Now this should also work fine with the Zenger Superbase Pro power stations, either the 1500 or the 2000. Both have a 12 to 60 volt input range. I was able to get 136 watts in on my Pro 2000, as you can see here. All right, so what are the pros and cons of doing something like this? Because it's, it's not all rainbows and unicorns. It doesn't uh, necessarily solve every problem. But one of the things that you might wanna be aware of is that it's a relatively inexpensive way to add capacity or recharge while you're using your power station. And it's a great way to recharge your power station when you have a circumstance where solar or AC power is just not an option. So when I say relatively expensive, what do I, what do I mean there? Well, if you're using something like this 12 volt battery from Power Queen, this is the 100 amp hour version, the cost is about 24 cents per watt hour of capacity. And if you compare that to an actual expansion battery that plugs into the side of a power station, assuming that you have a power station that supports that, you're gonna find that those are typically priced in the range of 61 cents to around 78 cents uh, per watt hour. So that is well over double and actually could be over triple, depending on which one you're looking at, over triple the cost of doing something like this. And an arrangement like this also allows you to kind of recharge this battery independent of the power station. If you have a small MPPT charge controller or even a PWM charge controller, you can charge this separate from the power station if you needed to via solar or via AC if you got a charger for it. And then of course you could use this battery to power other loads if you needed it to, because it's obviously designed to handle that as well. And as I said, this does work well with power stations, whether or not they have a port for an expansion battery. All right, so what are the downsides versus just buying an expansion battery? Again, assuming your power station supports that. Well, first of all, this does not output a ton of watts. So as you saw in the Delta II, we actually got 185 watts out, which is excellent. Uh, but on most of the power stations, it averaged about uh, about 110 to 120 watts, pretty typically. And on the very small ones, you, it kind of caps out, like the Explorer 500 or the Vito Man uh, Jump 600. Those kind of cap out around 60, 61 watts. And so on the larger capacity power stations, if you let's say you get only 115 watts in, it could take you quite a while to fully recharge a power station. And one of the things you can do is take advantage of your power station's pass-through charging capability, which lets you discharge through the AC ports or the DC ports while you are also charging. Now, one of the things that you may run into is if you are discharging at rates higher than this can input, say 120 watts or so, well, you're gonna deplete that battery faster than this can recharge it. So that is something that you wanna be aware of, and that is one of the disadvantages of this approach versus spending two or three times more and getting an expansion battery. And the last kind of downside that I can think of with something like this is that you do have to be a little bit comfortable from a DIY standpoint of either splicing wires and attaching connectors and things like that. It's really not hard, and if you're willing just to do a little bit of investigation on YouTube, you can find videos that show you exactly how to do that properly and safely, and it's actually very easy. So, and I highly recommend it. And there's something satisfying about creating something like this and that actually works and provides some utility. So anyway, I hope you found this information useful. If you did, please consider giving me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate that. And uh, consider subscribing if this is the kind of content that you enjoy. Got a lot more in the queue coming, so stay tuned for that stuff. And I do hope to see you in the next one. Until then, have fun out there. 24 volts in, and you need... All right, so what are the... And one of the things you can do is you can take advantage of the pass-through uh, charging capabilities of most power stations. Um, you